Regina Kessler. Regina? Regina was instrumental in getting Walt's book published. Is that correct? I'm not speaking out of turn. So anyone who had the privilege of reading Life on Stage, thank you for that, Regina. Regina also, I believe, worked for a T company, is that correct? Or you provided Walt with, with thousands of bags of tea over the years. We're very grateful to you for that. So please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Regina Kessler. Where are you going to find good pizza in New York City? I mean, really. And I don't have the budget 
that Ellen has. But Doug, if you could hand me that. Uh, <laughs> no, if you could just hand me that bag that I gave you earlier. <laughs> Doug was improvising with me there. <laughs> yes, so ma'am. I don't have, as I said, the budget that Ellen had to get everyone pizza. But um, Doug, you can actually help me out here. I did get some pizza flavored Pringles. <laughs> so I'm going to hear you. <laughs> Everyone just take one, remember there are people in the back. So help yourself. So there we go. See? See? That's me doing bits, Walt. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no bits, please. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask my good friend Rusty Wilson if he would like to come up and say a few words. And you know, see. Or, uh, Rusty and Ed Gershon, actually. If you have anything you would like to say. If not, I will. But please. Uh, yes. <laughs> Everyone will get the chance later. But. Rusty Wilson, Ed Gershman. Gosh, uh, it's an honor to be able to say something about Walt uh, to this group. Um, I'm short and sweet. Walt would never have the most uh, influence over me more than anyone else in the hall. Um, he, uh, he introduced me to uh, an approach to the art and craft of acting that made total sense to me when I received it, even if I couldn't do it. Um, and I've been pursuing that, uh, I've been pursuing the practice of that for the last 35 years. And uh, it has been my honor to do so and, uh, and to be in this room with all of you who, I think, Somebody, uh, you, you've all felt to some degree or another um, what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm very full <laughs> at the moment, so I just want to say thank you all. Um, you are with me every minute of every day, and I had the great pleasure of having a chance to work with him for the last 35 years on a fairly consistent basis. And um, I'm just blessed. So thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. So many people who showed up today. <laughs> so many people who didn't. <laughs> And he, 
he was always there, always there for me. Always there for Bobby, right? You love Bobby, right? I feel the weight of me. He was there for all of us, and he was always there for me. And um, I, I'm just so blessed uh, uh, to have had him in my life. He was at my wedding, you know, and he gave me this beautiful gift for my wife and I. It was a, a, like this antique copper thing that had been with him like, forever. And I knew this, I knew the significance behind it. And uh, just a beautiful man, beautiful soul, beautiful person. He's going to be, he's missed. I mean, he's so missed already. Let's tell my wife this morning. I can't believe he's not here. He should be here. My pictures are here. in the studio <laughs> there. And um, uh, early in the morning, my girlfriend at the time got up to use the facilities, and she bumped into Walt <laughs> in the hallway. And Walt was wearing a very uh, tattered, yellowish undershirt and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a conversation. And there was Walt. Hello there. And he's whole pulling it down. And I don't know if that led to the breakup, but I think it was a contributing factor. <laughs> Uh, let us say that Walt was not concerned with pants or <laughs> <laughs> embarrassment or anything. Um, thank you, and Rusty, that was beautiful. Rusty uh, continues, as many of us do, uh, the teaching of Walt. And I, I watched him in class, and it is amazing how much Rusty is Walt. <laughs> <laughs> to the point, yes, it's, 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 a, it's a flattering. So there are all of us here, I think, are carrying on Walt's legacy, and, and he is here. He's here. He's here. Uh, continuing on, uh, Catherine Canjano. Yes? Uh, please, please come up. Uh, Catherine worked um, with Walt with La Cognata, if I'm not mistaken. She worked uh, with him on the acting for singers, is that correct? Any of what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they didn't realize. Well, and you're going to do some real singing as well? Please do. Ah. Um, I also 
I have a small handful of students. I'm actually an acting teacher in Berlin for some singers. I have colleagues come to me and prepare roles. We do essays, we do endowments. Um, I just had a student, um, and she made her Lucia debut. We, we had many lessons on it. She endowed every idiot on stage with her, with either her mother or her brother or her Russian friend from 10 years ago. She had a huge success, and her acting was captivating, and it's because Walt. That was Walt. I hope that I can continue his legacy as a singer and as a teacher, as a communicator. Whatever happens, I'm here to serve art, too. Walt, we've come to really talk with Evelyn, get this up. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> <laughs>
and boardwalk empire, but to me, he will always be the man who sucked a bottle of ketchup during the production of the front page. I'll be close. Sir Robert, go ahead. Seven years ago, our class uh, Walt brought us down to uh, the loft. It was bare. And um, he showed us the plans and the life he was going to have with Richard, the home in the studio. And we all knew that, uh, that something special was happening. Um, Walt, uh, I just want to thank uh, Canova and April, who were uh, his caretakers uh, during those uh, final, uh, final years. They, they really loved him and took care of him. And he also, you know, you think about who, who's going to be there when you're, when you're going to, when you're dying. And uh, five minutes before, I had visited him many times, of course. And uh, oh, that's Walt right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shock treatments. <laughs> I told him about my aunt Charlotte's electric shock treatments. <laughs> and she was our babysitter. 
<laughs> and, um, <laughs> after that, um, it was pretty much over, and I was, um, you know, a soldier of war, and, uh, and I was, you know, forever his protector, and, and would follow all his instructions, and, you know, would go off to war for him, and, and um, the bond just became really close, because for the first time, you know, I could breathe, I had love it, and I could breathe. And um, I had told him in June that uh, uh, I was going to do uh, As You Like It at New Jersey Shakespeare Theater, and he was trying to figure out how he could get there. You know, maybe, you know, maybe the, 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 the truck could come get me, he'd drive me off over here and pick you up, and he'd yeah, cart me up to the sea. Maybe a helicopter can come. <laughs> I said, well, no, yeah, you, you can't come. You, you don't have to come. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> and, uh, he was in good spirits, and I was telling him for 37 years, I've been writing my acceptance uh, Oscar speech, right? <laughs> <laughs> and over the years, it, it changed a lot. It was long speech and short speech, and sometimes one word. And uh, I always said that I would you know, uh, mention him. He was always in every version of the Oscar speech. <laughs> and um, I would mention my mom. And, um, and my mom and all were dear friends. And um, I had said, Walt, this was back in June, Walt, I finally got the speech. I got it. And it, uh, it happened because my mom left a voicemail on my uh, phone, and it went like this. Robbie, it's your mother. <laughs> like I didn't know. Right? <laughs> Robbie, are you listening? Are you there? Are you listening? Listen. <laughs> I was in the kitchen cooking. I had the TV on. I don't know what channel or what program, but I heard your voice, and I thank God you had a job. <laughs> and then I would say, me too, Ma. Me too. Thank you, Walt. <laughs> All of us have a thousand stories for Walt and Shirley. I, I love Walt, his enthusiasm when he calls, the way he said your name. Hello, Walt the Tender. Andrew! Hello! <laughs> and, and I live in, in Haley, Idaho now, so I would tell him, what are you working on? And fortunately, I've been acting and teaching, but there are rare occasions where you could, commerce got in the way. Oh, I'm not doing anything. Well, I'm uh, waiting tables, I'm working, I'm not doing anything. He would say, you have to tend to your artistic garden. You must always tend your artistic garden, or go away. <laughs> so keep that in mind, it's a little bit of We tend our artistic garden every day. And you're going to make that Oscar speech. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Michael Hume. Michael was the musical director of Lessons in Love, correct? Yes. Yes. And also worked with Walt on uh, many other musical productions at the Network Lab Theater. Michael Hume. production by Masterworks Auditory Theater of the Gondoliers. So actually before I was the music director, I played uh, Marco in that production of the Gondoliers, um, which as Lenore said was a long process. <laughs> but uh, that's where it started and later on I did some musical direction for him, sang benefits and so on, and studied with him as well. So whether I was singing, um, working on musical theater, or whether we were working on a Schubert song, that Walt would get me to invest with the most amazing qualities 
it was always just great, great teaching. Um, he didn't coach me in this role, but I thought, let's lighten the mood a little bit. Um, so I'm going to sing a couple of songs uh, from the Apple Tree, a role that I played, and uh, all of Walt's teaching was with me, of course. And uh, Adam sings two songs after he's met this creature named Eve in the Garden of Eden. Can't quite make out what she's all about, but she, he knows one thing, she's bothering the hell out of him. And then later, after they get, get kicked out of the garden, and then uh, their first child is born, but Adam doesn't know what that is either, and uh, gets quite confused about it. And Lenore's going to help me with a brief scene in that. I'm going to try this off mic, I think. <laughs> I collect. 
reflection and she punched me in the nose. <laughs> it's growing teeth and it can bite. And I'm convinced that what we have here is a bear. I'm pretty sick, but Eve is not. She burned the muzzle that I made for it to wear. I searched the woods, I made traps, and yet I couldn't find its sister or its brother. And though I've hunted far and wide, while Eve has hardly stepped outside, I'll be damned if she didn't catch another. <laughs>